There's been quite a tradition of adventure books with maritime themes and settings. Think of the Horatio Hornblower novels of C.S. Forrester, or Moby Dick for that matter, or the adventure stories of Joseph Conrad. Of course, all those tales took place on the surface of the ocean. The man Anthony Mason is about to take us to meet is a writer of tales that take place below the surface. On New York's East River, a small boat cruises back and forth beneath the white stone bridge, bouncing sonar waves off the river bottom. Here's the lane we're going to run. Here we are, see, coming in on it. The leader of this expedition is an adventure novelist by trade, but Clive Cussler is on a personal adventure. He's searching for a sunken ship. Mark 420. We're looking for, everybody thinks we're crazy, we're looking for a small submarine that was built by John Holland, the uh, called the inventor creator of the uh, modern submarine. The submarine went down somewhere in these waters on a cold night in 1883. It's never been found. Because the submarine's only 16 feet long, so it really is the proverbial needle in a haystack. Did you get something? That was about just a little bump. It was about 10 feet off the line. They spend days sweeping back and forth, but the lost sub eludes them. We didn't find the submarine where it was supposed to be, which is usually the case. They, they, they're never found where they're supposed to be. But then the writer who raised the Titanic has never gone where he was supposed to go. In fact, Clive Cussler might never have become a writer if he'd listened to his wife Barbara's verdict on his first book. She wasn't really impressed. In fact, I think her words were, don't get your hopes up, nothing will ever come of this. I've been told that most of my life. In fact, I was told early on, you know, don't write adventure, adventure doesn't sell. The exploits of Cussler's seafaring hero, Dirk Pitt, have sold, are you ready? some 90 million copies around the world. In his recent book, The Sea Hunters, Cussler finally told the story of his own adventures at sea. You dedicated the book to your children, who you said grew up with a father who never grew up. That's true. They, they all laugh about that. I've, I've never really grown up. I still, you know, and I'm, I'm lucky with a wife who, who's kind of the same way. We'll still go out and try and roll her, you know, roll her blade and kill ourselves and bun, uh, bungee jump when I'm 60. I rode a bicycle to L.A. when I was 50. Cussler's first job was running a gas station, Clive and Dick's Petrol Emporium, before he became a successful advertising executive. He was 36 when he decided he'd like to write a paperback adventure series. And I thought, what can I do that's different? Well, I thought, okay, you don't have a secret agent, you don't have a spy, you don't have a detective. So I had this marine engineer who gets into all kinds of mischief, uh, and all the books are based in and around water. And that's how I came up with Dirk Pitt. I can't thank you mm -hmm. enough for all the joy you gave. Oh, well, thank you, you, my pleasure. Cussler's success as a writer has allowed him to indulge a passion that developed back before he was pumping gas. Did you know when you started buying cars that it was going to end up like this? <laughs> Not a clue, no. Never <laughs> thought about it. Just all of a sudden you buy one, you buy another one. On the outskirts of Denver, he's filled a warehouse with his collection of classic cars. So most of the time you find these in, in semi-derelict condition? Generally. Yeah, and restored. This one was. This one was in very poor condition when I bought it. Thank Cussler you. still remembers the first car auction he went to when bidding on a rare Hispano Suiza reached $50,000. And I sat there, all of a sudden, my God, I'd never written a check for more than $500 in my life. And all of a sudden, I just bought a $50,000 car, and I broke out in sweat. I started to shake, and then all of a sudden, it hit me. My God, I can afford it. <laughs> he owns 82 antiques now. So what do you do with all these cars? No, oh, well, some of them, I must admit, is like painting on a wall. You know, you can look at them. But the nice thing about a car that I can, I can call up the, the guys that maintain them for me and say, I want to take out the Buick or I want to take out the Cadillac or the Duesenberg. Ah, yes, the 1929 Duesenberg. Since the engine's been all rebuilt, she should, she should get up there towards 110. 
which is really excellent when you consider the weight and, and this massive front end with the wind resistance. When you look at the car collection and you look at the amount of uh, searching for shipwrecks you do, I, I would. It's yeah, gotta, what do I ride? Yeah, yeah you ride. <laughs> That's why I say I, riding to me is an occupation. I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, I got other interests. <laughs> I mean, there's at least 60 days out of the year I'm out looking for shipwrecks. Cussler's profits from Dirk Pitt paid for these adventures too. Some years ago, the search team decided it needed a name. So at first they said, well, you're paying for this. We'll call it the Clive Cussler Foundation. And I said, well, I've got an ego, but it ain't that big. So I nixed that. So they oh, gave it the it. same name as Dirk Pitt's fictional employer, NUMA, the National Underwater and Marine Agency. So far, they've located 60 ships. What was your biggest thrill in that score? I suppose uh, the Hunley, the Confederate submarine, the Hunley. In 1864, the Hunley was the first submarine to sink a warship when it torpedoed the Union sloop, the Housatonic, in these South Carolina waters. But the sub itself went down that night, along with its nine-man crew. Over 15 years, Cussler and his NUMA team made four expeditions to find the Hunley, searching more than 1,200 miles. In May of 1995, the needle on their magnetometer finally jumped. They had found their sub. This looks like the hatch right there. It was, it was covered three feet in silt. That's what made it so difficult. You had to use a magnetometer and go right over it. NUMA does not raise the ships or keep any artifacts. Cussler's only trophies are the models he has made of his finds. And ultimately, you have nothing to show for it except the satisfaction that you can say, I'm the guy that found it on the, that's under true. the water. That's true. <laughs> that, and that's plenty. It is for me. I suppose, I suppose there's a satisfaction of knowing you always be a little footnote in history. You know, that's about it. But. Um, no, it's, it's strange because if we're successful, then curtain comes down, then I start in on the next one. Mr. Clive Cussler, would you please come forward? This past year, the State University of New York's Maritime College awarded Cussler an honorary degree. At the same time, first his book, The Sea Hunters, then his novel, Flood Tide, hit number one on the bestseller list. I think the big kick to me was I'd never been first in anything, and then to have two books, you know, the nonfiction uh, and then the fiction, both number one in the same year after 32 years, that, that was quite a thrill. But it may never happen again, but I had my little moment in the sun. And they told him adventure books would never sell. After 32 years, those books are still paying for Clive Cussler's adventures.